Hi, boys and girls, and welcome back to the library. We're going to be reading some of the books that we read aloud in the library this week. Some are very funny, and one is kind of sad. And it's about our grandparents getting older, which happens to all of us, but it's still a very sweet story. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will see you next week in the library. Have a great day. Little Red and the Very Hungry Lion, written and illustrated by Alex T. Smith, read by Miss St. Germain with guest readers Julia St. Germain and Coach. This is Little Red. Today, she is going to be gobbled up by a lion. This is the lion. Well, that's what he thinks is going to happen anyway. One hot morning, Auntie Rosie woke up covered in spots. There was only one thing for them, spot medicine. Ring, 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 ring. Oh dear, oh dear, said Little Red when she heard the news. I'll come right away. So she put some spot medicine in her basket and waved goodbye to her daddy. It was a long way to Aunt Rosie's house. Little Red walked under the giraffes over the sleepy crocodiles and past the chittering monkeys. She crept around the termite mounds and under the leaping gazelles. Then she caught a ride on an elephant, wiggled her way around the hippos and warthogs and waved hello to the meerkats. Then she sat down in the shade of a shady tree and that's when the lion arrived, the very hungry lion. Oh, hello, purred the lion. Where are you going? To visit my auntie, who is covered in spots, said Little Red. In the time it took for his tummy to rumble, the very hungry lion had cooked up a very naughty plan. My very clever plan. One, sneak off to Auntie Rosie's house. Two, hide her in a cabinet. Three, dress up as Auntie Rosie. Four, wait for a bit. Five, jump up and eat, Little Red. Six, eat Aunt Rosie for dessert. Well done, you are a very clever lion. And he rushed off to put his plan into action. When he arrived, the very hungry lion stuffed Auntie Rosie in a cabinet and locked the door. Then he squeezed himself into one of her nightgowns and covered himself all over in spots. Of course, when Little Red arrived, she realized right away it wasn't Auntie Rosie sitting in the bed. She quickly looked around and spotted her auntie peeking through a gap in the cabinet. Then Little Red decided that she was going to teach that naughty lion a lesson. Oh, Auntie! cried Little Red. What tangled hair you have! And before the very hungry lion could even lick his lips, Little Red had brushed and combed and twisted and braided until the lion had a lovely new look. This had not been part of the lion's plan, so... He opened his mouth wide. Disgusting! Shouted Little Red. What gigantic grimy teeth you have, Auntie! And Little Red made the very hungry lion brush, brush, brush his teeth until they sparkled. Oh, Auntie, sighed Little Red. What an old nightgown you are wearing. And before the very hungry lion knew it, Little Red had found a much prettier dress for him to wear. This had not been part of the lion's plan either. Stop, yelled the lion. I am a very hungry lion, and my tummy is grumbling. Little Red pointed her finger. Well, trying to eat children and aunties is very naughty. If you were hungry, all you had to do was ask for some food. 
The very hungry lion let Auntie Rosie out of the cabinet and said sorry ever so politely. Little Red gave Auntie Rosie the spot medicine, which worked immediately. Then the three of them gobbled up a whole basket of donuts together. The lion had five. Soon it was beginning to get dark, so the lion walked all the way back home with Little Red on his very best behavior. He promised to never, ever, ever try to eat another auntie or any children. But he might be tempted to eat Daddy. No, bad kitty. The Lion Inside by Rachel Bright and Jim Field in a dry, dusty place, where the sand sparkled gold, stood a mighty flat rock, all craggy and old. And under that rock, in a tiny full house, lived the littlest, quietest, meekest brown mouse. He was so very tiny, so incredibly small, that nobody noticed him, ever, hello, at all. He got trod on, ow, and sat on, ouch, and missed out for stuff, ignored and forgotten. Yes, mouse life was tough. Meanwhile, far above, on top of the rock, times were quite different. It was lion o'clock. This huge, toothsome creature made sure everyone saw how important he was by how loud he could. Roar! He was head of the pack. He was shouty and tough. He loved showing the crowd he was made of strong stuff. Yes, all were impressed by this mighty king cat. If only, thought Mouse, I could be more like that. Then, late one dark night, in his mini mouse bed. The cleverest thought popped into his head. He jumped from the covers and held up a paw. I've got it, he said. What I need is a roar. I mean, what if this mouse with the weeniest squeak was a little more grrr and a little less meek? Well, he'd still be the smallest of fuzzy brown mice, but he'd make friends and join in, and life would be nice. Yes, thought the mouse. I must find out how. I will learn how to roar, and I will learn it now. But, gulp, oh my gosh, there was only one beast who could teach him this thing, but might make him a feast. It was time to be strong, take a chance. After all, forever was such a long time to feel small. So he made himself brave and he thought like a winner. He set off for the top, hoping not to be dinner. It felt like the scariest thing he could do. But if you want things to change, you first have to change you. The further he climbed, the closer he got to the slumbering lion reclining on top. Then at last, as he stood on his tippity toes, he found himself suddenly nose to nose. Ahem. <clears throat> Pardon me. Wake up, Mr. Lion. You've got company. Um, squeak. Mr. Lion, what I've come to you for is 
Squeak! Do you think you could teach me your roar? A silence befell that twinkling plain. Lion opened his eyes and puffed out his mane. Time slowed right down. Why, it felt like a week. Then he opened his mouth and let out an eek. The lion was shaking, his paws all a fumble. He was backing away with a scrambling tumble. Don't hurt me, he whimpered. Oh, try to be nice. Well, my goodness, this lion was frightened of mice. Don't worry, Mouse peeped. I'm a friend, not a foe. Let's rock this together. We'll have fun, don't you know? That was a magical moment for sure. When Mouse didn't feel at all small anymore, he had found his true voice and learned to speak out. And for that, you don't need to roar or to shout. And from that day and always, the two were a pair. They both liked that rock better, now that rock was to share. The mouse, while still little, felt big in his head. And Lion, he still roared, but with laughter instead. <laughs> yes, that day they both learned that no matter your size, we all have a mouse and a lion inside. And now, Library Lion. Written by Michelle Knudsen. Illustrated by Kevin Hawks. One day, a lion came to the library. He walked right past the circulation desk and up into the stacks. Mr. McBee ran down the hall to the head librarian's office. Miss Merriweather, he called. No running said Miss Merriweather, without looking up. But there's a lion, said Mr. McBee, in the library. Is he breaking any rules? asked Miss Merriweather. She was very particular about rule breaking. Well, no, said Mr. McBee. Not really. Then leave him be. The lion wandered all around the library. He sniffed the card catalog. He rubbed his head against the new book collection. Then he padded over to the story corner and went to sleep. No one was sure what to do. There weren't any rules about lions in the library. Soon it was time for story hour. There weren't any rules about lions at story hour either. The story lady seemed a little nervous but she read out the first book's title in a good, clear voice. The lion looked up. The story lady kept reading. The lion stayed for the next story, and the story after that. He waited for another story, but the children began to walk away. Story hour is over, a little girl told him. It's time to go. The lion looked at the children. He looked at the story lady, he looked at the closed books, then he roared very loud. <laughs> Miss Merriweather came striding out of her office. Who is making that noise? she demanded. It's the lion, said Mr. McBee. Miss Merriweather marched over to the lion. If you cannot be quiet, you will have to leave, 
she said in a stern voice. Those are the rules. The lion kept roaring. He sounded sad. The little girl tugged on Miss Merriweather's dress. If he promises to be quiet, can he come back for story hour tomorrow? She asked. The lion stopped roaring. He looked at Miss Merriweather. Miss Merriweather looked back. Then she said, Yes, a nice quiet lion would certainly be allowed to come back for story hour tomorrow. Hooray! said the children. The next day the lion came back. You are early, said Miss Merriweather. Story hour is not until three o'clock. The lion did not budge. Very well, said Miss Merriweather. You might as well make yourself useful. She sent him off to dust the encyclopedias until it was time for story hour. The next day the lion came early again. This time Miss Merriweather asked him to lick all the envelopes for the overdue notices. Soon the lion began doing things without being asked. He dusted the encyclopedias. He licked the envelopes. He let small children stand on his back to reach books on the highest shelves. Then he curled up in the story corner to wait for story hour to begin. At first, the people in the library were nervous about the lion. But soon they got used to having him around. In fact, he seemed very well suited for the library. His big feet were quiet on the library floor. He made a comfy backrest for the children at story hour. And he never roared in the library anymore. What a helpful lion, people said. They patted his soft head as he walked by. How did we ever get along without him? Mr. McBee scowled when he heard that. They had always gotten along fine before. No lions were needed. Lions, he thought, could not understand rules. They did not belong in the library. One day, after he had dusted all the encyclopedias and licked all the envelopes and helped all the small children, the lion padded down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office to see what else there was to do. There was still some time left before story hour. Hello, lion, said Miss Merriweather. I know something you can do. You can bring a book back into the stacks for me. Let me just get it down from the shelf. Miss Merriweather stepped up onto the step stool. The book was just out of reach. Miss Merriweather stood on her toes. She stretched out her fingers. Almost there, she said. Then Miss Merriweather stretched a little too far. Ouch, said Miss Merriweather softly. She did not get up. Mr. McBee, she called after a minute. Mr. McBee! But Mr. McBee was at the circulation desk. He could not hear her calling. Lion, said Miss Merriweather, please go and get Mr. McBee. The lion ran down the hall. No running, Miss Merriweather called after him. He put his big front paws up on the circulation desk and looked at Mr. McBee. Go away, lion, said Mr. McBee. I'm busy. The lion whined. He pointed his nose down the hall toward Miss Merriweather's office. Mr. McBee ignored him. Finally, the lion did the only thing he could think of to do. He looked at Mr. McBee right in the eye. Then he opened his mouth very wide. And he roared the loudest roar he had ever roared in his life. <laughs> Mr. McBee gasped. You're not being quiet, he said to the lion. You're breaking the rules. Mr. McBee walked down the hall as fast as he could. The lion did not follow him. He had broken the rules. He knew what that meant. He hung his head and walked toward the doors. Mr. McBee did not notice. Miss Merriweather, 
he called as he walked. Miss Merriweather, the lion broke the rules. The lion broke the rules. He burst into Miss Merriweather's office. She was not in her chair. Miss Merriweather? he asked. Sometimes, said Miss Merriweather from the floor behind her desk, there is a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. Now please go call a doctor. I think I've broken my arm. Mr. McBee ran to call a doctor. No running, Miss Merriweather called after him. The next day, things were back to normal. Almost. Miss Merriweather's left arm was in a cast. The doctor had told her not to work too hard. I will have my lion to help me, Miss Merriweather thought. But the lion did not come to the library that morning. At three o'clock, Miss Merriweather walked over to the story corner. The story lady was just beginning a story for the children. The lion was not there. People in the library kept looking up from their books and computer screens, hoping they would see a familiar furry face. But the lion did not come that day. The lion did not come the next day either, or the day after that. One evening, Mr. McBee stopped by Miss Merriweather's office on his way out. Can I do anything for you before I go, Miss Merriweather? He asked her. No, thank you, said Miss Merriweather. She was looking out the window. Her voice was very quiet, even for the library. Mr. McBee frowned as he walked away. He thought there was probably something he could do for Miss Merriweather after all. Mr. McBee left the library, but he did not go home. He walked around the neighborhood. He looked under cars. He looked behind bushes. He looked in backyards and trash cans and tree houses. Finally, he circled all the way back to the library. The lion was sitting outside, looking in through the glass doors. Hello, lion, said Mr. McBee. The lion did not turn around. I thought you'd like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a new rule at the library. No roaring aloud, unless you have a very good reason. Say, if you're trying to help a friend who's been hurt, for example. The lion's ears twitched. He turned around, but Mr. McBee was already walking away. The next day, Mr. McBee walked down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office. What is it, Mr. McBee? asked Miss Merriweather in her new, sad, quiet voice. I thought you'd like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a lion in the library. Miss Merriweather jumped up from her chair and ran down the hall. Mr. McBee smiled. No running, he called after her. Miss Merriweather didn't listen. Sometimes there was a good reason to break the rules even in the library.